Hello everyone, happy Friday. Thank you for joining our webinar today, Recalibrating Agile Models to be 100% Virtual. Today, our speakers will be Sue Joy, Software Development VP at Stefanini, and Nikhil, Solutions Engineer Director at Stefanini. At the end of the webinar, we will open it up for some questions, and then later today, um, we will be sending out the recording and any main takeaways that we want to um, have you remember. So thank you, and let's get started. All right, thanks, Amy, for the introduction. Uh, here uh, today, we will uh, cover a few areas on the um, uh, Agile, 100% uh, virtual Agile model. We'll start off with the role of Agile in digital transformation. Uh, followed by how the present day crisis is redefining the way Agile is delivered uh, and how Stephanie is adapting um, to the 100% virtual Agile model. And we will close with some key takeaways, what uh, we have learned through the process of um, moving towards the 100% virtual Agile model. As you all may know that, you know, uh, the digital uh, enterprise is reality today, and uh, uh, that IT is no longer just a CIO agenda, right? It is it is uh, directly linked with uh, business strategy and and brand reputation and how you actually perform in the uh, evolving uh, business landscape today. So the transformation and the delivery of transformation is definitely necessary and. You know, and using technology for uh, for adapting to these uh, changing business models, uh, and this is mainly done to uh, empower customers to provide some digital touch points to be uh, able to get more uh, insight into enterprise operations, make it more real time, and also provide some seamless customer experience as well. And uh, to do this, uh, you know, uh, companies need to be obviously aware of their industry, their uh, differentiators in the field, uh, but to truly engage in the digital transformation, you know, they, have, they definitely need to innovate rapidly, uh, you know, uh, and, and fail fast, be able to pivot quickly, and have an exponential use of technology to be able to do that. Uh, and to that end, they also have to have cross-functional teams uh, within the organization all working in harmony to make this transformation happen. It's no longer just, Agile is no longer just a silo within IT development. It encompasses the entire enterprise. And so it's important that, you know, cross-functional teams work together to make this uh, enter, uh, digital transformation happen. Yep, uh, absolutely, Suja. So, yep, Agile, you know, it, it's kind of, it is delivering digital transformation in a very dynamic organizational context today. And you, you're so right, right? It, at least the way we've been looking at it, it's not just about development lifecycle agility or IT development, but the way we've been looking at and helping our clients drive Agile agile is more around the enterprise agility right it's about um, enabling the concept to implementation cycle uh, in a rapid quick time which is so which is so essential to deliver a successful digital transformation right it's about taking an idea and evolving an idea navigating through different functions departments you know uh, and and kind of walking that whole uh, process right where an idea becomes a concept uh, you know you, you're able to get a minimum value product you're able to drive an adoption on board the larger organization drive a business model change to a point where it, it becomes more mainstream right and what we call it as like a dive deep dive and a submarine methodology which is essentially powered on agile concepts but as as you know as we all know like agile is about uh, the whole concept to implementation and that isn't changing right just from an expectation standpoint and uh, again as we're talking about this 
the roles, the skills, the different competencies that are involved through that life cycle, that isn't changing either, right? It's no longer the traditional IT development squad as we've all been used to knowing it. It includes roles that are much more like a creation squad that can help you build the whole concept, that can help you build the puzzle, that can help you uh, you know, do a rapid prototype followed by a design squad, which is more around customer experience design, which is more around, um, uh, you know, having human centered designs designed for customer journeys uh, or a performance squad, which are uh, roles or competencies that help you uh, assess your customer experience, that help you understand your uh, customer perceptions, user behaviors, generate that feedback, you know, put it back into your product backlog, uh, involves roles like your automation squad that gives you the necessary process automation, agility into your delivery, and, and roles like transformation squad as well, right? So uh, I think just setting the context, agile, uh, as we've seen, as we've been talking about, is delivering a digital transformation in a much dynamic organizational context, um, taking an idea to a concept to an implementation, engaging various cross-functional and multiple roles, and that isn't changing, right? So, yeah. So yeah, so, and, yeah, and in that in that cross-functional model, right? It's not just all the individual squads operate in silos. You know, they are all a part of a a, a complete. Uh, uh, tribe, if you want to call it that, you know, that work across the across the silos also uh, within this the squads to make it a more cohesive solution overall when it is delivered, and everybody has their their roles and responsibilities within the silos, but also uh, their interdependencies as well. Uh, and and since that that is the case, that there are different squads, different uh, uh, different silos, and we also have distributed teams uh, that are either part of the silo or cross-functional uh, that were located initially in the uh, the development center, uh, which was multi-shore, and we are moving to a more, or, uh, almost to a no-shore no -shore model. And what really that, that means is everybody is not, not just a empowered team, now we are talking about empowering individuals and motivated moving from motivated just teams to motivated individuals and that requires some training some enablement uh, and also be, being able to uh, you know delegate some responsibility and building trust within the teams as well uh, one of the most important things for for us is ensuring that really clear communication is given right from the the senior leadership to the the, the project management and even delivery management and delivery execution uh, as well, and you know, and we make it really important to uh, define uh, what done really means for each of the team as the the code moves from uh, from development to deployment. Yep, and 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 from a process perspective, to make this transition happen, uh, we're seeing it. I think it's absolutely critical to drive more process automation. So, you know, if, if you've been at different stages of your automation journey, uh, some ops, low ops, uh, for for a hundred percent agile, virtual agile model to be successful, uh, I, I think you've got to push up the ante and try and move toward the utopian no ops, like a zero touch model. If security and security practices within your agile model have been uh, have have not really t had the focus will be absolutely critical to integrate your security within your application development agile development processes and and most important right i think you've got to measure the right things uh, so if you've been measuring sprint velocity important that you measure uh, business throughput your value that you're delivering through your two week sprints and some KPIs around your team member productivity, right? Absolutely ensured, necessary to ensure that every team member is, is living up to the expectation and delivering in this challenge times. 
and, and is enabled to do so, right? Even from a technology standpoint, uh, important that we have single source of truth, important that we have, uh, you know, um, we, we, re we remove or we minimize redundant information, documentary repositories. Uh, so, if, uh, so if you've had, uh, you know, situations where you have uh, folders on SharePoint, on Teams, important that we kind of just consolidate, simplify some of that environment, Remote connectivity, as we all know, is very critical. Collaboration tools, techniques, it's a plethora out there. Plenty of them, important that we select the best of the breed. And needless to say, right, I think security uh, becomes uh, more important or now than ever uh, given today's context and how we are delivering and developing software. Right. And, uh... You know, we have been uh, doing the distributed agile at Stephanie for a while now. You know, it's been over over ten years, and 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 right now for us, it's it's really making the step from the distributed agile to the hundred percent virtual model. And uh, we have done this, uh, you know, uh, as a part, and obviously I tried to do this, and this has been accelerated with the current conditions due to COVID nineteen, and we been able to you know successfully have a very large majority of our employees 25,000 employees to be working from their home offices remotely and uh, you know that's given us the the opportunity to you know work with the global talent force and uh, like we mentioned the no shore model to be able to optimize some of that to get the the best of breed talent to uh, to put the teams together to work uh, seamlessly even in the 100% virtual agile model and just as a case in point for our viewers, right, uh, and to give a sense of how we are making this transition with with our Sophie team uh, as a case in point and, and more, almost all of our project product teams. Uh, so with Sophie team as a case in point, these are like, uh, it's a global team that supports more than 200, with more than 200 team members, 75 customers. So as you can see, we've all, and as Sujoy mentioned, we have had distributed teams working together, but now we have 200 team members adapting to this 100% virtual agile model, working from their home offices and working in a way that they're all collaborating and that work in some way, shape or form affects each of each other, right? So there's a lot of collaboration going on and we've kind of been able to make those adjustments to enable and successfully execute in this model right so again so if just a case in point we have we have a lot of our product teams and we're also helping our customers with some of this quick learnings that we've had to move even our customer engagements and customer software development projects onto this 100 percent virtual models so Suja, a lot of what we'll now talk about how we're making this transition truly is from our experience of having done and learn some of this in in double in your double quick time. Absolutely. So the first thing is obviously uh, the leadership uh, side of things, and one of the main things is we try to uh, communicate clearly, over communicate at the start. Uh, you know, clearly define the definition of done. And one of the first challenges we had was to uh, to train the team that when you know. When decisions are made, either individually or collectively in a smaller group, that that's communicated downstream. Because if teams are working with outdated information, it can create a lot of rework. So we try to ensure um, and that the, that the teams are trained to understand when decisions are made and that they are communicated effectively uh, downstream. Um, super important. Uh, also, you know, one of the things that we found that the the agile coaching and mentoring through the through the process as the teams are are moving to the new model is as a refresher is definitely necessary and also baking in some some uh, team building culture uh, into uh, the models in itself so we try to pair people up uh, you know with either a mentor mentor mentee relationship or even with peers for for code reviews etc so they can they can actually tie into um, the engagement together and have some sense of shared uh, leadership and shared responsibility as well. Um, from a 
cultural alignment standpoint, what we've tried to do is is maximize the golden hours. These are the hours where uh, the cross regional teams have some time overlap. We try to do the the stand up meetings during those times so that they have the opportunity to share the ideas in in the time zones that they're they're working, and also, you know, to be able to uh, uh, team build uh, during that that phase where they're sharing ideas and and also uh, uh, sharing uh, different ways of uh, executing certain problems that they face through the days. In certain cases, it also uh, forms a good handoff point as well. And as time progresses, those relationships get stronger. And also, it's important to build some trust as we, as we are working through these cross-regional teams. Sure. And, and from a process perspective, I guess we've recognized the need to be creative in, in, in conducting some of this agile activities or tasks especially the ones that otherwise are very high impact context rich which um, in, in practice have been you know most effective uh, uh, doing it in person especially some uh, activities like whether you're talking a project kickoff or you're talking cross functional workshops getting people from different departments or getting them to you know map out a customer journey end to end or other design thinking interventions, even some scrum ceremonies, like release planning, uh, sprint retrospectives, even daily scrums, right? I think we've kind of challenged uh, in some cases where the need for communication is a little more. We've kind of even challenged the need to maybe have, uh, you know, a, a couple touch points or um, more than just a 15 minutes that we've traditionally been used to, which again is based on the premise of easy access anytime access to all the team members, right? So we've kind of uh, recognized the need to do some of these activities different to be more, uh, to be successful in this model. Even when it comes to project and project management, uh, we've kind of, uh, you know, understood the need to focus on true value and, and uh, metrics that truly matter, right? Uh, some best practices, especially when it comes to dependency mapping like we all work in teams you work alone you're not you work remote but you don't work alone your work depends on each other so absolutely critical that we made dependency mapping very uh, you know more rigorous in, included some of the best practices and made information as virtual as we can right so be readily available and virtual information so these are just some examples as you can see there's a lean inception that's already we've had an example of doing it virtually a design sprint doing it virtually which as on the right hand side as you can see traditionally been done with people getting in a room post it uh, it'll be some time before we get back to that model but we, we're kind of adjusting to the new paradigm and we're not compromising on or at least we haven't seen any loss of effectiveness or engagements based on uh, you know how far based on uh, some of these exercises that we've already done with our product teams, as well as with some of our customers as well. So as we uh, yeah, make this transition, you know, one of the important things is for us uh, is to uh, standardize the tools and the methodology across the, the regional teams as well. So that's been one of the, the big things that, that we have done um, for for example, standardizing on all collaboration, meeting content, etc., is done using Teams. Um, all the the work for on on the backlog is done using Trello, Kanban boards. So standardizing the models to execute Agile is is, is very very important. And then as we move into the the, the realm of of putting um, the the work that has been done by the agile teams into uh, into uh, product in productive landscapes with the DevOps practices have have been standardized as well. And uh, here you will see on this this slide a plethora of uh, of tools that are available for doing chat or video conferencing, document sharing, uh, you know, virtual office, uh, etc. But uh, what what we would recommend is to be able to um, to uh, 
pick the pick the tools and be able to uh, you know standardize that across the the teams and if possible standardize across the enterprise so that everybody is kept aware uh, as you know the outdated information definitely cause rework and also to last but not least have a consistent uh, development and delivery environment as well super super important for making sure these virtual teams are successful. Okay, so ju just a uh, recap, right, of what we've discussed. We've kind of uh, shared our thoughts on, you know, why we believe the what and why, the very expectations with which an Agile model works, that hasn't changed. Uh, we shared our thoughts on the how Agile is delivered and will be delivered in a 100% virtual model, uh, needs some adaptation, and we also talked about from our experience on how we made some of those adaptations, right? So going back to the last part of our agenda and key takeaways. So these are some thoughts that we would want to leave our uh, you know, listeners with. Um, and most important for them uh, of them is uh, we would want uh, you, you guys to focus on the maturity, right? Ag agility works when things work and foundationally processes are strong and mature. And guess what your 100 percent virtual team model uh remote model is only going to demand higher levels of maturity so so that's something that uh, you you'd want to kind of at least get within your radar uh have a thermostat understand where your maturity is and uh, make some concerted efforts to increase the maturity of your model uh, and as part of some of things you might want to do, focus on metrics that really matter. There are true vanity, a lot of vanity metrics out there. You can measure everything and almost anything, but understand the metrics that truly add value to your customers. So, for example, understand, try understand your true time to market, right? So, if you are uh, whether you're able to deliver your market a product to your customers every two weeks, right? So. Focus on metrics that matter, uh, dual focus, right? So as you're building products, as you're churning your two-week sprints, as you're developing capabilities, also focus on implementing some of your agile engineering practices, right? Uh, if, if DevOps hasn't been uh, truly on your agenda, which, uh, you know, continuous engineering practices hasn't been on, on your agenda, it's something that you'd want to consider because that would really help move towards the zero touch uh, uh, you know low touch model which is so very critical given your 100 percent virtual model in which your teams will work a adopt uh, some best practices right practices that would help you reduce rework goes back to your dependency mapping L look at your first time right look at productivity again throughput is important so just don't look at how many story points you're delivering but also look at what value you're de what value does it uh, is it delivering with every two week sprints and seek help right i think agile was built on a fundamental premise that your uh, fundament your core processes are sound and mature so seek help where you can right your partners develop software for a living i think they have over the years mastered those very basic foundational practices uh, other thing you'd want to do uh, is to look at uh, the security and resiliency of your technical architectures. As we talked about, I think security becomes absolutely important, uh, should, uh, should be and very critical to adapt to the new norm. Compliance of your data, data security. So look at if your staging environments are, are you know, adequately set up for a continuous testing, uh, compliant to your data, compliance requirements, and so on. Uh, last but not the least, don't try, uh, if you've been trying to fit uh, a square peg in a round hole, there will always be limitations, right? And by what that, what I mean is uh, critically evaluate if your applications are truly set for Agile, right? So if you're, if you're still running monolithic applications, if you're still running legacy applications, uh that might i mean they you know that's really the fa that that really would drive the limitation on your overall model so look at ways by which you could uh work around circumvent i'm not talking about radical transformation but 
things that could help you minimize the you know limitations of some of your uh, legacy or monolithic apps which are truly not amenable for uh, or which do not perform or give you the best results uh, in a in you know in an agile model and uh, here you know uh, the 100% virtual adult team models uh, we believe are here to stay i think it's going to be important uh, for us to be able to embrace it and and know that it is going to be a reality and it is becoming a reality for us right now um, and the and the transition of course it takes a little bit of time and we are learning every day but the transition from the the co-located to the 100 percent virtual is definitely incremental i wouldn't say that we've learned every part of the the journey but uh, you know we are here today to share what we had had learned uh, also important is to understand that we the the collaboration uh, requires a great deal of trust and trust between uh, between individuals not just just teams anymore so it's uh, it's definitely a, a a higher barrier but you know with the with having the clear consistent leadership and making sure that the team building is is put into the into the culture of the of the delivery Agile delivery model is is very important, and last but most importantly, is that we just because they are 100% virtual, there should be no compromise in the quality of delivery and how the delivery is happening in with the teams and take the necessary steps that are needed to bring up the 100% virtual uh, model to work just as we did with the 100% distributed model. What do you, Amy? Great, thank you so much, Nikhil and Sujoy. So I do have a couple questions from the audience. Um, do so you put a lot of emphasis on improving the maturity of agile environments to succeed in a hundred percent virtual in a hundred percent virtual agile model? How do you um, get? Um, Sorry, how do you get to know about the maturity of an agile model? Like, what do you look for in particular? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, Amy. And and uh, so again, I, I kind of touched upon some of those things as we as I talked. So look for uh, obvious indicators, right? Look for uh, symptoms. I would say I think that would give you a feel of whether the model is functioning the way it should. So look for indicators like. Are you meeting, you know, if, if that rework, right? Are you revisiting user stories that you probably got done, say in sprint one, they come back and there's some rework in sprint three, right? Just gives you a sense that maybe your prioritization or your planning isn't where it should be, right? Look at uh, what really comes out of a sprint retrospective when you be, meet with your product owners and your business to really evaluate uh, what it, you know, to really evaluate it, the completeness of uh, um, what gets done in a two-week sprint, right? I would say even look at the definition of done. Uh, what, what are the standards that you're setting for yourselves when you uh, when you sign up to a two-week sprint? So I guess there is no silver bullet per se, but those are some indicators that would uh, give you a sense of whether you're doing the right things and whether you know what what really is the scope for potential to to improve and uh, further enhance the maturity of your environment right and you can and and you know every organization and every agile team has a level of maturity that they are you know they can be in a rhetorical stage a certified stage a, a respectable stage or or really a measured stage and all of these different stages have uh, have a, a learning curve to jump from one to the one to the next. So you have to pretty much go from a uh, you know figure out where you are. You know, are you really, really adopting agile for the first time, or you're trying to really uh, improve the velocity of agile, or it's really super measured uh, to the extent that you know you're you're doing repeatable tasks in the agile agile fashion. You just need some uh, minor adjustments. So like Nicholas said, there's no silver bullet. But it definitely step back uh, and assess where you are uh, in your agile maturity model, and then take the step to to jump to the next stage. 
Perfect. Um, since you talked a lot about um, your experiences, which um, do you think is the most challenging dimension? Is it process, technology, or people? Uh, definitely people, uh, followed by process, followed by technology. Uh, the people aspect uh, is uh, the most important aspect, right, from uh, ensuring that, that, you know, there is a sense of individual leadership that has to be uh, inculcated and they have to have the drive and and, and take some uh, some shared ownership and responsibility uh, and also to be able to uh, ensure that the agile processes are maintained at the individual level and not just at the team level. Nico, do you have anything else to add? No, Suja, I mean, you're talking from experience, so <laughs> nothing to add to that. <laughs> I have one more. Um, what are some some ways your practice or promote promote team building virtual virtually as a leader? Right. So uh, part of it is you know uh, having you know the, baking the team building into the culture, and what that really means is as as we are setting the agile teams up, we usually either pair. Uh, a mentor mentee uh, type uh, team members even even though they they might be uh, geographically distributed that's one of the ways we are trying to foster some some uh, some team building and then as well as from a uh, peer to peer doing peer reviews together uh, on application code that's built to be able to uh, critique come up with suggestions ideas so they work uh, more collaboratively and this is just baking it in as we are setting the teams up, we are baking this uh, into that model. That's what we have adopted in, in, in to ensure that the culture, culture alignment and team alignment is preserved. Anything else to add, Nikhil or Sujoy? Okay, everyone, um, thank you again for joining our webinar. Um, that will do it for us today. Um, enjoy your weekend, stay healthy and safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone.